Welcome back. So we're talking about the singular value decomposition and how we can take data matrices and decompose them into dominant uh, column-wise correlation vectors and dominant row-wise correlation vectors. And so now I'm gonna walk you through an example in MATLAB. Uh, I wanna point out that this entire uh, lecture series is uh, from chapter one of our new book, Data-Driven Science and Engineering by myself and Nathan Kutz. Uh, and all of the code in both MATLAB and in Python are online at this website. I realize you can't probably see this. Uh, the website is databookuw.com. And we have all of the MATLAB code here, and then all of the Python code uh, was translated by Daniel Delewski, so you can code in whichever uh, framework you like. And there's also the lectures uh, in each of these parts for each of these chapters. So chapter one is the first chapter in part one on the singular value decomposition, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so all of the code is here. This is what we're gonna be following. And today I'm gonna walk you through the first example of how to compute the SVD on a simple uh, image example. All right, and we're going to invert our colors to make our lives a little bit easier so things look, uh, look a little bit cleaner. Okay, so we're gonna walk through a lot of examples in both MATLAB and in Python of how to compute the SVD and how to use it. Uh, this is really kind of just a warm up where we're going to load an image of my dog Mort and we're going to use the SVD to compress that image and we're gonna look at how uh, the compression quality varies as we keep more or less modes. Uh, remember this is useful for matrix approximation so we're gonna approximate a matrix which is an image. Okay, good, so the first thing I'm gonna do is clear uh, all of my memory, close all of uh, the windows and clear the screen. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to load the image of my dog. So I'm gonna load it into this matrix A, image read uh, dog.jpg, I think that should work. And it's a color image, so I'm gonna convert it into a grayscale image, x equals double RGB to gray of A. So I'm gonna convert this, uh, from an int 256 color image into uh, double valued, so double precision numbers uh, only in grayscale channels. So I'm gonna collapse all of the color channels into one. Um, I should probably show you what this actually looks like. So I'm just gonna do an image SC. Uh, actually, maybe I'll make some subplots. Subplot 221, so I'm gonna have a four by four image. The first one's gonna be the true dog, and then I'm gonna show different compressed uh, versions of Mort. So 221, image SCX, uh, axis off. And because I have uh, inverted my color scheme, normally I would use color map gray. I have a custom color map gray inverse where I just flip the color values. So I'm going to do color map gray inf. That's my own code I wrote. Uh, and then I'm going to put a title original, that's my original dog. Okay, and hopefully nothing, uh, okay, that's a little tiny, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the GCF position, um, let's say 1200 by 1600. Okay, good. So this is Mordecai, the snow dog. This is the original high res image. You could zoom in and it's, uh, it's very high res uh, image. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat this grayscale image as if it were a matrix. Okay, so this is a big matrix. I don't know if you can see here, but it's size uh, 15, 2000 by 1500. So 2000 rows, 1500 columns. So a high resolution image. And we're going to use the SVD to compress that X matrix. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, in MATLAB, to compute the SVD is extremely simple. You just say USV equals SVD of my X matrix. And I'm gonna give it the economy option because I don't want uh, big square matrices of size 2000 by 2000 for U. I want a 2000 by 1500 U matrix of just the first 1500 singular vectors corresponding to the non-zero singular values. Okay, so very easy, and I should definitely put a semicolon on this because if I don't, it's just gonna dump all of those matrices to the, to the screen. 
So I can run this, uh, and it takes very little time to run. It's done. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to uh, a version where I actually have some of this coded up. Okay, so this is what we just coded. We have our image of Mort loaded. Here we compute the SVD, U sigma V equals SVD of X. Uh, and I should be careful and put the econ. It doesn't really matter that much for this uh, matrix because it's almost square. But if it was a skinnier matrix, this would make a bigger deal. And now what I'm going to do in this code right here, uh, I'm going to go through different ranks of the SVD truncation. So remember, we can use the SVD. Uh, we have this um, x equals u sigma v transpose. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the approximation of that, that SVD. If I only keep the first r columns of u, the first r by r subblock of sigma, and the first r columns of v. Uh, and then transposed. And so we're going to look at what the image reconstruction looks like for rank 5, rank 20, and rank 100. Okay? So we're going to increase the matrix approximation, and we should do a better and better job. And to build the matrix approximation is pretty simple. I just take those first r columns of u times the first r by r subblock of sigma times the first r columns of v transposed, and that's x approximate, and then I plot it. Okay? So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to run this. Good, that's Mort. Then I'm going to run this code. And here are my, uh, my matrix approximations, my low rank uh, SVD approximations. So again, my original high resolution dog. This is Mort if you only keep the first five dominant uh, singular vectors, left and right singular vectors. And this is as you increase uh, to order 20 and order 100. Okay, so let's break this down. In this r equals 5 case, we essentially are approximating this entire image by five linearly independent columns and five linearly independent rows. Uh, and you can tell that there's a lot of loss in this, uh, in this compression. But it actually has a lot of the basic features of the dog. So you can see kind of the snout, the eyes, the ears, and even uh, the stripes uh, on, his, on his pelt. Okay, so. That's, um, you know, even just five modes gets at least the rough idea of a dog. And as you increase this to r equals 20 and r equals 100, you can see that you get a lot more of the subtle features. Uh, so it's, it's maybe a little hard to tell uh, in low resolution, but you can tell that this is definitely a dog. You can even tell kind of what type of dog. But you can't see really the high resolution in the eyes, for example, or crisp details of the tail. But as you increase the number of modes to 100 modes, you actually start very faithfully reproducing uh, this, this dog mort. OK. Um, a couple of other neat things about image compression with the SVD. So this isn't you know, that widely used. People usually use Fourier transforms or wavelets uh, in what's called JPEG compression, which we'll talk about later. But um, this is actually a massive compression of the data. So remember that my original X matrix is 2,000 by 1,500, whereas here I only have to keep 100 of those vectors uh, and 100 of those row vectors. So 100 column vectors and 100 row vectors. This is almost a, um, it's almost a, a 15 to 1 compression in, uh, in this. Actually, I guess I have the numbers up here. This is exactly 11.67% of the numbers of x have to be stored to keep the first 100 columns of u, the first 100 columns of v, and the first 100 by 100 matrix of sigma. Okay, So uh, you can actually explicitly compute how much compression or how much data you're storing. Here's 0.6%, uh, here's 2.3%, and here is 11.7%. Uh, so pretty good compression, and you faithfully reconstruct the dog. Uh, something else I'll point out, in um, actually a lot of times in image compression, what you can do is you can embed digital watermarks in very, very low singular vectors. Uh, of, of the data matrix. So if you want to copyright this image and say, uh, image, this was taken by my wife, image by Bing Brenton, what you could do is you could pick a really, really, really low sigma value, and you could build uh, essentially some digital watermark with some, some information in the U and the V columns, and you could add that onto this, this matrix. It won't change what you actually see in the pixel values, 
but then if you take the SVD of this matrix, that digital watermark will still be in that low, um, the low value singular, singular values and singular vectors. So you can kind of hide uh, information in those low energy modes if you wanted to, okay? Digital watermarking. Good. So a couple of other things I want to show you are um, actually plotting the singular values. So this is extremely important. Anytime you have a data matrix X and you compute its SVD, I strongly encourage you to plot the singular values in sigma. Okay? This tells you how many modes you need to keep, what the structure of your data is, if it's high rank or low rank, uh, and how, how you can get away with truncating uh, at the value of R. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to plot the diagonal elements of sigma. Remember, it's a diagonal matrix, so I only want to plot the diagonal elements. And I'm going to plot them on a semi-log Y plot. So I'm going to only take the logarithm of those values and I'm going to plot them. And then I'm also going to plot the uh, cumulative sum, so the sum of the first R singular values, divided by the sum of all of the singular values to see how much energy or how much information is in the first R modes compared to all of the modes. Okay? And that's a lot to say, but I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so these are the singular value plots. Uh, for Mort the snow dog. And you see that on the x-axis here, we have the increasing rank from r equals uh, 1 to 1,500. And on the left plot, we're plotting the logarithm of the singular value sigma. And so what you can see is that there's actually a very, very steep drop off in the magnitude of these singular values, and then eventually it kind of levels off. And so this is what we're looking for, is this kind of large, um, group of, of big singular values that keeps most of the information in the data matrix. And that tells me that I can probably throw away a lot of these low energy singular values and keep most of the information in my data matrix. Um, you can, in principle, you know, do all kinds of things. Um, you can, you know, figure out how much you can be quantitative about this. You can figure out exactly um, how much drop off there is in the first 10, 20, 50, 100 modes and so on and so forth. And then over here in the cumulative energy, I think this is also a really important and interesting way to plot, is if I only kept the first, let's say, 100 or 500 modes, how much of the cumulative energy would I keep in that data set? And so you can tell that here we're over 90% if we keep the first uh, 500 modes. Surprisingly, even with the first one mode, we get about 30% of the information in that data matrix. So 30% of that matrix is kind of rank one, uh, and then you just keep doing better and better as you increase the rank R. Okay, good. So we'll have more principled discussions on how to select the rank R later um, in, in later sections, but I just wanted to show you this. You always plot this every time you compute a singular value decomposition. You plot the semi-log Y of the singular values and the cumulative sum uh, to see how much energy or variance you get at rank R. Okay? Good. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to show you is this interpretation of the SVD in terms of, uh, so the U and the V columns are eigenvectors of correlation matrices between the rows and the columns of X. So this is what we'll talk about next, is if I compute these correlation matrices X times X prime and, uh, sorry, X times X transpose, prime here just means transpose in MATLAB, so this is X, X transpose, and X transpose X. If I computed the eigenvectors of those big square matrices, I would get the columns of, of U and V, and the eigenvalues of those correlation matrices would be the uh, related to the diagonal elements of sigma. So I'm just going to plot what these look like. Uh, that's a little small, so I'm going to plot it up here on the same one. And so you can tell uh, that there's a lot of structure in these correlation matrices. So if I looked at the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of these correlation matrices, I would essentially get the dominant rows and the dominant columns uh, of my, my SVD of my dog mort. Okay, good. So uh, we've done an image compression example on mort on a matrix X uh, just to show how easy it is to compute the SVD in MATLAB and work with it. Okay, thank you.